Hello, welcome to Red Book Joy. Today I'm going to ramble about my highlights of 2022. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jack. If you're not new, welcome back to Red Book Joy. I haven't got a best of video for you. I've decided not to do a best of because when I'm saying something's the best, what do we mean by what is something is the best? I've been watching lots of people's best of and I think people who make those videos are very clear on these are my favourite books. These are the best books that I read in 2022. I can't do that this year because first of all my reading has been so enriched by being on booktube and the recommendations of books that I get have been so enriched that I don't do bad reading so I've enjoyed everything I read this year um, this has probably been the best reading year I've had um, in a long long time I've read very few mediocre books in fact I don't think I've read any mediocre books I've only finished one book that I actively disliked and yeah I don't finish uh, or make myself carry on with books I'm not enjoying. So if I read a book this year, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed some more than others, of course, of course I have. There are some books that have completely become favourites with me, but if I were to come up with the top 10, it would mean comparing books like Far From the Madding Crowd with Charlene Harris's uh, Southern Vampire Mysteries because if we're talk talking about best we mean the books I enjoyed the most or the books that were more meaningful to me or the books that will stay with me for a long time or books I learned something from or books that had an emotional impact on me because these are all very different different things they're different measurements and I find it really difficult to sit here and tell you that I had a top 10 when I had books that I read when I wasn't feeling very happy that perked me up, books that hit me like a punch in the stomach because they were so emotionally hard to read, but did I enjoy them? It, it's different, difficult to say. Best books will make you feel something, however, what they make you feel in comparison, you know, I, I loved, 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 loved Legends and Lattes by Travis Boultry this year, but I know it's not a book that everyone will enjoy. and I it was a book that I needed in the last few weeks of work leading up to Christmas because it was dark and it was miserable and it was snowy and I just needed that cosy comfort read and I cannot sit there and compare that book to Beloved by Toni Morrison which you know if you've read Beloved by Toni Morrison you'll understand why I can't sit here and compare that to Legends and Lattes so yeah I sat there and I thought well I could do my most enjoyable books um, of the year I could just go by what was enjoyable but then some of the books that I found most enjoyable were my rereads this year and then I thought well, is it is it fair to talk about favorites and include books that I reread this year so here we have a ramble I can give you straight away the worst book I read this year it was Flowers in the Attic by Virginia Andrews but it was a buddy read it was part of Garb August I was determined to do it and we did um yeah that's hands down the worst book I read this year. So the criteria for best or favourite books for me generally comes down to that rereadability with inclination to pick the book up and how much I was actively enjoying that book. And there are books I read this year that I would say I didn't have an inclination to pick them up all the time. Not that I wasn't enjoying them when I read them, I think enjoy is the wrong kind of word here. Not that I wasn't engaged by them or that I didn't want to read it, but they're books that I'm glad I've read. They're books that are really important and they're books that affected me very, very deeply. But to say I enjoyed my experience of reading them, I think is the wrong kind of word. It's the wrong choice of word. I appreciated them when I read them and I was engaged by them and I was impressed by the writing, the structure, the, the way that the authors managed to convey really complex emotional themes and ideas and those sorts of books are vital and important but whether I enjoy them as in I can say I love them, I can't. I can't say that. I can say the most important experiences I've had reading books and they're the sort of books that I want to continue reading but emotionally they impacted me so much and I find that yeah enjoyment for me comes hand in hand with just 
you know, happy feelings and wanting to read it. And some of these things I had to really physically gear myself up to read them. If I was talking about most enjoyable reading experiences of 2022, my rereading has been fantastic. Started off with Anna Green Gables, which is a highly, highly underrated book in my opinion. I know people think of it as a classic children's book, and I think that does it disservice because it's just a great book. So if you've never read Anna Green Gables and you think, oh, a classic children's book, just read it. It's a great book. It's brilliantly written um, and absolutely wonderful characters and humour and beautiful descriptions. So yeah, Anna Green Gables, I started off really well. I was reading it as part of the Anne along that Emily from Novel Novels was running. I kind of ran out of steam with the other Anne books though because there's less Anne Shirley as the books go on. It just, I kind of just dipped out. The other delightful thing that I did was reread the entire Sookie Stackhouse of series with Anne from Angie's Book Chatter and Amy from Booktube with Amy and Sam from Paper Not Books. So that's been one of my super highlights this year, um, was reading that entire series. I love that world. I love the world Charlene Harris has built. If you like urban fantasy, paranormal romance, if you like cozy mysteries, Charlene Harris is the queen of it. She really is. Yeah, we were loving that series. We had a brilliant time watching the lives and discussing it just some of the biggest laughs I've had this year. And yeah, we're gonna carry on reading more Charlene Harris with her Aurora Tea Garden series this year. And then I also kind of started another series read along, which was the Six Tudor Queen series, which is also run by Emily and Oval Novels, Gem from Gem of Books and Danny from Danny's Book World. And they're reading the Alison Weir Six Tudor Queen series. So they started off with reading Catherine of Aragon and I read it really, really quickly. I listened to the audiobook as well and read the physical book. So uh, I devoured it because it was what I wanted at that time. And I was desperate to go on to the next book. And if I'd have had Anne, the Anne Boleyn book there and then, I'd have gone straight onto it. But I thought, no, no, I'll stick with the series um, schedule. And I didn't do that. Then by the time two months later, when they were started reading Anne Boleyn, I just wasn't interested anymore. So what I've discovered about myself is in terms of series, if I'm reading a series and I'm into the series, I need to read, just binge the entire series. So I think year long series read alongs are not generally for me, though I am doing the Aurora Tea Garden ones, but that's slightly different because they're kind of, I, t I don't know if they get more involved, but they're kind of like standalone mysteries to start with. So yeah, and the group has been hilarious. So I'm really happy to be joining them again for this. The other thing I learned about myself was I found it really difficult to read things that were difficult. So what I've been doing is I've not been shying away from the difficult books and I'll talk about those books that affected me most deeply this year. But alongside them or sandwiched either side of them, I've made sure I'm reading something lighthearted and uplifting and cozy. <laughs> so that's something I've learned to do this year. I need to I don't want to shy away from dark and difficult books because it's a dark and difficult world and I think we learn, you know, to close our eyes to it is just, it's just turn a blind eye to the lived experiences of millions of people. So because of that, I've learned I could read those books, I need to offset with something else. In terms of the books that really affected me emotionally this year and I found really deeply affecting, and I'm not going to describe them all because they're very famous books. I finally read Beloved by Toni Morrison. Wow. I <laughs> also read Octavia E. Butler's Kindred and those two books and the accounts of slavery in those books, particularly in Beloved, um, are so horrific. I think everyone needs to read those books because it gives you a, a deeper insight into the horrors of it. Very important books. It, Kindred is being made into a Netflix show. I buddy read that with Claudia from Spencer's Library and she noted that uh, shows are coming out soon of Kindred because we were like why has this not been serialised this book's fantastic um, I also read If Bill Street Could Talk by James Baldwin what a brilliant writer yeah he's a booktube popular booktube um, author and rightly so I definitely want to read more James Baldwin um, and the account the sort of love story in that between two young people and the uh, miscarriage of justice and the racism and prejudice and the um, yeah the treatment of these characters yeah that book was fantastic as well Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. <laughs> the grief and the child loss, I found it just so affecting. I definitely can't wait to read her new book, uh, The Marriage Portrait. Um, but yeah, I read Hamnet and a lot of people have told me it's, some, it's a beautiful book and it is beautiful. And it's beautiful and it's so affecting and so difficult. I found it difficult to read. So when people said to me, oh, that's one of my favorite books, I've loved that book. 
I know why, I know why, and I can appreciate the writing and I appreciate it and I'm glad I read it, but the subject matter for me, I just found it just, it was just heartbreaking. Some people read because they like that, they want, they want that emotional, like, hit. Um, but yeah, I found it just, yeah, Hamnet was a very special book, but I don't think I'll ever read it again. <laughs> when I Hit You by Mina Kandasamy, I talked about that in a recent wrap-up video, and that is her account of a violent marriage in India, and um, yeah, that book was powerful. We get this kind of victim blaming in society about women who don't leave violent men and why they don't and that book gives you a real insight into how someone loses themselves in um, a relationship like that to the point where they they they're too you know where they can't they can't leave they can't leave it and it kind of explains it explains that because there's a lot of victim blaming that goes on in society isn't there so yeah that was a really powerful read I discovered that I can really, really enjoy and get on board with 20th century writers this year. I read E.M. Forster for the first time, I read Elizabeth von Arnhem, I read Barbara Pym, and um, I also read Dodie Smith's I Capture the Castle for our FOMO book club. And these writers were all very similar in the period that they write in or that they were writing about. Um, and. I absolutely loved them and unusually for me, this is completely unusual for me, they're character driven books. I'm very much a plot driven reader generally. I can't read a good a plot that hasn't got good characters, it has to have both but usually I like pace in my books but these books were studies of characters and the character development and they were very um, a lot, very humorous in places but also quite deep so I loved those books and that's something completely new to me so that was a new lesson for me this year that I really like uh, writers from that period and I actually also really enjoy character driven books for the first time ever with not a lot happens they're quite slow paced but there was so much humour in them and I have to say that the enrichment I got from reading majority of those I buddy read or I read as part of my book club, my FOMO book club uh, for I Capture the Castle and um, yeah, absolutely loved those and I'll be seeking out more sort of early to mid 20th century authors and books next year. Some lovely books that I read this year that I really loved, Away with the Penguins by Hazel Pryor. These are the books that I used to offset the really heavy reading that I was doing uh, and these really did offset it. They were light, they were just what I needed. Then also the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman. That was making me very happy. The book that made me happiest this year in terms of delighted was uh, Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry which is you know another booktube darling and it's just a wonderful cozy coffee shop found family just delight it was really delightful and i can't wait to read the new one when he eventually releases it alongside that of course the tea dragon society graphic novels by katie o'neill just gorgeous so if we're going to talk about inclination to read rereadability and enjoyable and couldn't put down and love the characters here come some of my books of the year. Both books by Elodie Harper that are out at the moment, The Wolf Den and The House with the Golden Door. They're the first two books in a planned trilogy. The third one's out in November and they are right up my street and why I haven't read them before now is beyond me. I saw Wolf, The Wolf Den in the library and I got it on a whim and then within a few days I was reading the second book and I'd read them both within about a week. They were absolutely fantastic and they follow the fortunes of um, Amara, I think she's called. Um, and she is a Greek girl who's sold into slavery and she's sold to a brothel in Pompeii. So, you know, historical fiction, tick, one of my top two favourite genres, and the classical period, which is my favourite historical period to read about, and brilliantly done. Uh, and also just stories about women and women in difficult situations, which I find um, I'm loving stories about women this year, like with a, a group of women together and how they support each other, how they can also kind of... Um, come into conflict with each other but yeah love that love those two books and can't wait for the next uh, book in the series Pachinko by Min Jin Lee couldn't stop reading that book thanks to Gemma from Gem of Books who hosted a read-along of it she loves Pachinko and she hosted a read-along earlier this year I read it with a great group of people on Voxer and for three quarters of that book I was absolutely gripped. The last quarter of the book let it down for me, it really did let it down. But the first three quarters, because the first three quarters were so good, I would recommend that book to absolutely anybody interested in, in historical fiction, in um, learning about the treatment of Koreans in Japan during the Second World War and the 
four. The Lincoln Highway by Amor Towles. I buddy read this with Jem from Gem of Books and yeah, it was great. Um, coming of age, road trip, set in the 1950s. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Lots of different perspectives. Um, lots of people don't like Amor Towles. This is my first Amor Towles, but yeah, I really enjoyed that book. I also read The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which is a YA classic and again, there are YA books and then there are good books that are classified and marketed as YA and The Perks of Being a Wallflower is one of them. I saw it over on AJ Dunn's channel. They said it was one of their favourite books um, of all time. They were sort of doing a, they were doing a top 20, I think, I can't remember. But they recommended it as one of their favourite books and I just thought, I've never read it. And I went immediately onto Scribd, got a copy and just started reading it. <laughs> was it on Scribd or on the library app? I can't remember. And um, yeah, I read it in a day. Fantastic really loved it and I don't know why <laughs> I've never read it before. Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. This was a tough read. I read this with Sandy from Miss Reads a lot and if I was going to pick a book of the year this would probably be it because it blew me away. It's the level of detail in terms of the sense of place and time that we got reading Lonesome Dove which is set in uh, Texas and it's uh, about um, the Hat Creek outfit they're called in a town called Lonesome Dove in Texas. They're a cattle outfit and they try to take their herd up to Montana. And there is a huge cast of characters um, and some horrific things happen to them on the way to the main, the characters in it. Um, but everything that happens gives you a real sense of frontier life, how difficult it was and how harsh it was, not only the lawlessness of the frontier which is often quite the focus of things but just the harsh conditions of the landscape uh then you know the the world that they were inhabiting and what they were doing yeah fantastic book we read that and um by the end of it i just couldn't put it down lonesome dove definitely if i'm going to pick a book of the year it's probably lonesome dove i didn't read nearly as many classics this year as i would have liked i think that's because i spent most of the year trying to work my way through war and peace which i did finally finish i'm glad i read it and I enjoyed a lot of it, but there was about 40% of it I could have done without. I think I really will enjoy Anna Karenina when I eventually get my head around reading another big classic, but I think that put me off reading lots of other classics this year. So I read Persuasion, I read Far From the Madding Crowd, Persuasion's a reread and a favourite, so I'm not going to talk about that because that is a favourite. Far From the Madding Crowd and North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, and both of those authors I want to read far more of because I love both of those books, they were great. I also read Ray Bradbury for the first time this year, Something Wicked This Way Comes. Um, brilliant, why have I never read Ray Bradbury before? His writing was just so poetic and lyrical I was really surprised by it I don't know why because everyone talks about what a great writer he is and um, I've wanted to read him for years something wicked this way comes was just gripping from the start and the style of his writing I just he's got a great voice and you can see um, he's a big influence on people like Neil Gaiman and Stephen King and you can kind of see how he influences their writing if you've because I've read extensively both Neil Gaiman and Stephen King and I can kind of see the influence of Bradbury in their writing having read that one book favourite children's books that I read this year, October October by Katia Balin, definitely one of my favourite books of the year, I've got a review of it, I'm going to link that, you don't need to um, need to talk about it here, but um, yeah, go and watch the review. Another favourite book of mine, which I haven't done a review yet of, but I will, was Layla and the Blue Fox, which was Kira Millwood Hargrave and Tom DeFreston's book for middle grade, absolutely loved that. So yeah, they're my favourite children's books that I read this year. In terms of non-fiction, one of my favourite books this year was definitely Terry Pratchett's Biography of Life with Footnotes by his assistant Rob Wilkins. I am going to do a video on that, a long discussion video on it, because I've decided off the back of that, another thing I've learned this year is that uh, Terry Pratchett is my favourite author. There. I mean, it's obvious, really, when you think about the amount of his books that I've read over my lifetime. The most of the books I own by one single author is Terry Pratchett because he has, you know, there are 41 or 42 Discworld novels, 41 I think, and I've got all of those. I've got some of his other works as well. I've got the novels he wrote before the Discworld. I've got his children's books. I've got so many of his books and um, I reread him continually and I find that the Discworld books particularly are my comfort reads. Um, I, there's not a year goes by where I don't read several Discworld books and I did that this year as well. There are several books of his that I haven't yet read because I don't, I haven't been able to bring myself to read the last of this world books because once they're gone, he's he's since he died, the realization that there are going to be no more new ones has been really um, something I haven't been able to get past. So I read his biography this year, and while I was reading the biography, and I steamed through it, and I'm going to reread it. 
I had this revelation. Oh my gosh, I've never said I've got a favourite author. I've always said I've got favourite authors, but if I had to pick one author that is my favourite author ever is Terry Pratchett. So that's another lesson I learned this year. I loved that biography. It really was fantastic. A real, real, real insight into a brilliant person. Pandora's Jar by Natalie Haynes. Loved that series of essays uh, about women in Greek mythology. That was one of my favourite uh, non-fiction books this year. And Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez, which was all about data bias in the world and how the world is built for men. The default setting for everything in this world is male, down to from medicine to engineering to housing. Um, that book was just such an eye-opener. It just made me furious. <laughs> so yeah, it was a great non-fiction book. So highlights this year, absolutely everybody here on YouTube. I want to thank everybody. I hit a thousand subscribers this year, which just has blown my mind. And it's continuing to grow. Even though sometimes I go weeks without posting a video, um, I'm so grateful for everybody that watches me, that continues to watch me, that listens to me waffle. And, you know, I do put thought into my videos, but sometimes I sit down and I just turn the camera on and I talk and people still like to listen to me and I get lovely comments. I've made some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful friends since I've been on booktube and I continue to meet new people and talk to fascinating people and I just love being part of this community. I didn't set a reading goal last year, I set, well, I, I set a, a goal of one book on Goodreads because I thought um, you needed to set a goal to get your year in books thing but as it turns out you don't but I didn't set a numerical goal because I was fed up of like chasing a numerical goal on Goodreads and I read a hundred books this year which is more than I've read in the last however many years since I've been keeping records on Goodreads and I'm sure I read more than 100 books a year when I was younger because um, if you watch my Evolution of a Reader video, you'll know that I um, just devoured books when I was younger and I never kept records, I didn't count them. Um, I wish I had now, but I didn't. But yeah, since I've been keeping these records for the last 10 years, I have not read as many books. And I think it's because I didn't put any pressure on myself and I was just enjoying my reading. And I was reading so many wonderful things with people and, and joining, like starting up a book club has been phenomenal and it's such a great book club. I love the co-hosts that I'm working with, Alice and Gemma are just delightful people and I love them, they're really good friends. And um, yeah, and I've met some booktubers in real life this year. I met Alice, I met Claudia. Um, I'm planning on definitely meeting more of them in real life this year. So um, yeah, it's just been a fantastic year. Uh, in terms of that. So I read over like I read over 100 books this year. They didn't record all of them because some of them I reviewed for a, a children's book website that I read. So I don't count lots of the children's books I read. And I can wholeheartedly say that being here and being part of this community and being on booktube and thinking about my reading and constantly thinking about books and selecting books has meant that my reading is always good. Like, I don't do bad reading, I don't do mediocre reading, I just love it. It's enriched my life immeasurably, immeasurably, and I'm so grateful for it. So I wanted to say thank you to all the people that have um, watched me this year, uh, and continue to watch me, that have watched me since I've been on here, the people that I've made friends with, and uh, the people that I love watching, I don't get to watch enough of, because time and life and things like that, but um, yeah, thank you all for making this a wonderful reading year. And I'm really looking forward to my forthcoming year on booktube. Um, like I said, in terms of plans, I don't have any plans. I don't have any goals. I do have um, things, I'm, I'm hosting a readathon at the moment. I have another readathon um, that I'm hoping to host again this year that I hosted last year, um, picture this. Um, but other than that, I want to have the no plan plan and that means if I've got the no plan plan, it means I can be saying yes to more things and more experiences and more new things. So that's kind of why I don't want to have too many plans. I like to be open to when people say, let's read this. I go, yes, yes, let's read that. I have the time to do that. That's what I want. I want time to say yes to things. So let me know in the comments. Did you read any of the books I've talked about? Are you planning on reading any of the books I've talked about? Um, like I said, if I had to put, pick um, a fiction and non-fiction book of the year. My fiction book of the year would probably be Lonesome Dove, but I would give you the caveat of saying it is extremely violent and hard and difficult to read in terms of what happens to these characters and the life that they lead. So yeah, I would be very wary of reading it if you don't like that. It's a very violent time. Um, in terms of non-fiction, 
yeah, the Terry Pratchett biography is just oh, absolutely fantastic book. Even if you've never read any Pratchett, I think it's a brilliant biography of a brilliant person and well worth a read. I think this, the end of his life and the struggle with Alzheimer's was heartbreaking, but also infuriating that um, the things he had to go through and the things that people are now going through. It's a huge crisis, isn't it? So that was a big eye-opener. But yeah, those two books, I suppose, my non-fiction and fiction top books of the year. There you go. I started off by saying I wasn't going to pick a best, but there you go. <laughs> I've talked myself into it. So yeah, tell me, what were your best books of the year, if you had any? Um, and have you got any plans for this forthcoming year? And yeah, hopefully you'll stick around to listen more of my rambling nonsense. Not quite sure why you would, but hopefully you will. See you again soon. Bye.